Oi, oi, the Eds. 3 0 win against Southampton. Me and Kev. Obviously, it's a fan call in show as well. Obviously, the link is in the description. The link will be at the top of the comments. Obviously, if you do join us this evening, you will be timed. Um, obviously, f- two mi- two minutes to obviously have, have your say and ever and get involved as well. But obviously, Kev, big win. Wasn't easy by all accounts. I think we all watched that first opening 45. Jürgen said it took a fair while. Um, Southampton, if you go back to, in time, I think their manager, Russell Martin, said had a couple of very good opportunities, really should have scored. But yet again, mate, really impressive stuff by Liverpool, which, in which was combined with yet again a lot of youth within the squad. Yeah, yeah. You know, look, we started like it was expected. We just had a cup final with, with most of the same team on the Sunday. I was expecting us to be, be a bit leggy at the start. I was expecting us to be a bit complacent. I was expecting Jorgen to take risks in the game because he knew that even if he didn't get through the competition, the other two competitions... I, I think even in Jorgen's mind, the FA Cup was probably the least most important mm. trophy left for the rest of the season. When we'd gotten to the League Cup final and won the League Cup final, we could see, right, yeah, we'll go for it if we can, mm. but we're still going to play our same game and just risk maybe going down a goal a goal or so earlier on. But like... You know, we're, we've been, I've been saying it for the last season and a half, we're, we're a second half team. We come out of the blocks in the second half, completely up in our level, completely up in yeah. our control of the game. And we just turn it on its head like that. You know, so. Happy days. The lads, young lads are doing brilliant. It's phenomenal, my city. Uh, I think chat as well. If you are watching on the repeat, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well. As chat already saying, smash that like button as well. Smash the like button on Kev's channel. Everyone's channel really just help out everyone's videos smash as me. well. Smash it. Smash it for the Neds. Um, and the added, the added incentive going into the last couple of minutes of this game, Kev. Obviously, a big game, like it always is when you play Manchester United. Regardless of how good or bad they're playing, we're absolutely flying at the minute. Um, but it just adds to even more the obviously Liverpool having to go now to Old Trafford two times this season. As, as Niall said, they're a brilliant tie against Manchester United. It is, mate. And I'm confident, Kev, and we should be. I think, obviously, the interviewer asked um, Dan's, are you ready for the Old Trafford affair? And the... Uh, Smart answer. Yeah, he's he's ready. And he, he yeah. obviously, two quick fire goals, Kev. Let's get straight into the goals, mate. Um, Dan's, obviously, getting two goals. Obviously, three appearances, two goals, one trophy. Not a bad start to his Liverpool career. Good enough. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Uh, well, look... What a lad is doing well. He said it himself in the interview that he had his he had his debut the other day. And, on Wednesday. Uh, and his, yeah, mm-hmm. and Wednesday, yeah, and he, and his dad cried. He said, I, I'm not even gonna ask what he's gonna be like when they go up to now after scoring two goals, you know, um as well, you know. So look, fair use to the lad, man. He's look, he's a scr- another scouser, dude. Both I don't think scouts, it's a, both scouts goal goal scorers yeah. as well. I, I don't think I've ever seen as many scouts players coming through that look like that they could actually make a break into getting into the squad yeah. for the longest time. It was always like a Steven Gerrard and a Jamie Carragher. And then for a while it was Trent Alexander-Arnold and, and Curtis Jones. I know there's an, there's an opportunity for a, a, a good four to five scouts to be a real integral part of this team going through. And I mean, if you want to count Harvey Elliott into that as well, his dad being a scout, a big Liverpool yeah. fan. And, so and him, he, he is. He's, he's born into, he's, you know, he's, he's, born, he's born from the ilk. So uh, it's that, you know, it's, it, it, it's the future's looking good. The future's looking great, you know. And uh, and Dan's and Kumas have been banging them in yeah. uh, together for the for the youth squads as well, which is good. No, Jack, just to give you a nuts mm. nuts stat go forward. Go on, <clears throat> right? No, not not a nuts nuts stat, but a nuts scenario. Okay, so we we're meant to play Everton and the weekend that we've now got United. Mm. Just to, just to get this out of the way, the first for, for the start. This game on Saturday is the last Saturday you're going to see Liverpool playing for the rest of the season. Right? This is what I've calculated throughout the whole of what I've been doing in a while. Right? So, no more 12 30 kickoffs. Right? No more Monday night footballs. Get in! Ev- <laughs> everything is going to be Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday. I'm oh, sorry. Are you saying that wrong? I'm saying that wrong. It's going to be Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Thursday, that kind of way. Unless it's like, you know, Europa weeks. But he goes Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, and it's going to go like that for the rest of the season, right? Now the only the only 
point that Everton could have moved to first was the week after the Fulham game, which would have moved to the Sunday. So that would have been April, if I remember rightly, April the 15th or something like that. Yeah, It could have moved to the hours of the 14th or something like that. I don't know what it was. Uh, it could have moved to that week, but I think because Fulham are already within that week, that they get the kind of reference to move just a couple of days within their game because they've all of that kind of it's, stuff. Set it's only mainly been on the beat for the for the television cameras, mate. So I've yeah. broke about this. this week. No, no, but Jack, we, we, wait, where it's where it's going to go from here. Come so, on. You're dragging so it out. It's well. not, I'm not dragging it out. I'm, I'm telling you, this is this I'm trying to get the explanation across from it. But it's what it is, right? Is it's going to go to a point where it hits <laughs> right. Everything are going to end up after Aston, Aston Villa will move to Sunday, the media 12th, right? Everything are going to end up on Wednesday, May the 15th, hmm. in their last home game ever at Goodison. They could be in a relegation battle, and at that point, Liverpool could be going for the title. So you could see win, Liverpool win the league at Goodison while relegating Everton in their last ever game at Goodison. And it's just nuts. We so are going to be that, cooking. We are going to be cooking. So that it's the only, but like it can move to after the Fulham game, but then where would Fulham move? Are they going to move that back weeks? Or do they give it that to the team preference for that week? Because they've already got like the, you know, everything set up, the pre's done, everything like that done for the police force. The, you know, they're moving around to the streets and all that. They're already put in there. So Fulham will just move a few days, whereas yeah. everything is, is the open book. So that will drop down to wherever it needs to drop down. And the only logical place I can see that I've done already, now you might, might have missed it, but the only place that I've seen is that it can move to mm. May 15th as the very last game uh, at, at, at Goodison. Yeah. So, yeah. Happy days. Happy days there. Um, obviously, chat, obviously, the link is in the in the comments as well. If you want to have your little say, jump in and uh, obviously let us know your thoughts on the game. Um, make sure you do have a, a camera and obviously a, a, an audio if you possibly can, please, everyone. Um, but Press is saying, Jaden Dan scoring the winner versus the Ev last minute. To relegate them, fingers crossed, lad. Big up there, Dean. How are we? The march on, boys. The scouts, lads, are on the move. And I said it, I think it was in Connor's show this week, obviously off the back of the, obviously the, the final win as well. I think, imagine if this is Liverpool's time, like it was for the United era of, obviously, the boys of 99. Obviously, the was it ninety two or ninety nine boys? Well, the youngsters, the crop of youngsters that come through um, at Manchester United then as well. But J- obviously, Kumas, obviously the son of Jason Kumas, getting on the goal scoring charts anyway in his first Liverpool senior appearance. Obviously, scoring on his debut, Kev. It was a phenomenal strike, really drifting off that left hand side, really getting that slight deflection. But they all count at the end of the day. We're not going to be uh, nitpicking it, really. But in terms of what... And this is the... It fills me, all of us. We see these young lads with the smile on the face. Obviously, this is going to mean so much for them and in terms of their development. Uh, just, you know, on mute there, lads. Um, yeah, massive growth, man. Sorry. Uh, massive growth. I did a jack there for a second. Yeah, too. And uh, <laughs> Well, no, massive growth. Like, look, he's teaching Luis Diaz how to do it there when he's moving in. His first time stepping in like that across the players and taking a strike. So yeah, nuts, man. They look the great future ahead for these lads. Apparently, Klopp is like giving him high praise, and he's one of the best finishers he's ever seen um, coming through since he's been in his time there, mm, which is really good. Great. No, no, not Dan's. Kumas. Oh, Kumas as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and if Dan's is getting into these positions and doing what he's doing as well, man, he's he's not afraid to get involved. That a lot of scousers. You want to see these lads coming through before you want to see them the big money bucks spent on people. You want to see them doing really, really well. A team full of scousers. Could you imagine that at Old Trafford or anywhere we go? We're getting absolutely booed left, right, and centre yeah. uh, on the concourse as well. The, it was bad yeah. enough just having one scouser in our team in terms of Trent, but if we've got about six or ten of them just chilling on the pitch and uh, just going, yeah, cross, cross that ball in, lad. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it'd be absolutely phenomenal, mate. Uh, but yes. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts. The I just, I just, I just pity the, the, the Brazilian wonder, wonder class fella that's going to be in the middle of the park in the yeah, future. Just... Listen to the boys. He's like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's really... yeah, that's... It won't just no, be man, let it happen. Needing, Please let it happen. Be needing scout lessons as well. Yeah. Added to the mix, Trent, Jones, Kumas, Dan's as well. Like that second finish from Dan's, Kev, in, in chat. 
yeah. was absolutely phenomenal. Said it on my watch along. Like, and I think Ian Wright, quite rightly so, uh, give it the plaudits in the commentary. For, for football purists, that's such a, the movement on him, really, to really anticipate that. That's mm. something that you can't really teach. It's yeah. just a bit like Darwin Nunes esque running as well. It's that instinctive nature, really, in terms of, and even as Klopp said in the post match as well, could have, well, he was in, well, the last three shots, he could have scored all of them, really. Obviously, the, the two great chances he had at Wembley as well, mate. It's, he's for me, Dan's going into this season. You know me, mate, and chat as, as well. I don't know, I don't watch a lot of the academy football, but by mm. Lord, these lads have taken us by storm. I think Dan's could be absolutely very important to come now at the end of May. Yeah. In terms, of obviously, when you look at the Gakpos, you look at the Nunes as well, but added to the mix, Dan's, mate, he's got that instinctive nature about his game that he's going to be extremely dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Look, he, he's, he's got all the plaudits. Apparently, he's shot from like five foot three, tiny little guy, sure. like right up to like six foot two, six foot three. You know, and you know, was out for a while because of growing pain injuries. You know, we've got a lot of lads in the squad that have suffered from that kind of stuff, like Rams, well. yeah. Like, yeah, Ramsey, Gordon, but well. yeah, yeah, Gordon, Dan's, mm -hmm. but Dan seems to have come through the better out of all of them so far. You know, really sharp. So he seems to have like grown into himself, let's say, um, uh, a lot better, a lot quicker, and adapted a lot better than everybody else, and not picked up as many injuries. I want to see him do well, man. I, yeah. I, I really do. You know, it's. That. Okay, so Jurgen Klopp's going to leave at the end of the season. That's going to bring with it a lot of exits. Hmm. Right? Liverpool are going to lose players that you don't that you mightn't expect to lose or you don't want to lose. We're going to lose them. It happened. It happened at United when Fergie left. It happened at Arsenal when when Wenger started dropping off. But it happened. You know, it happens to all the great teams. Uh, with, when when a great manager leaves the team, people like to say, right, I, I don't want to really kind of. I'll work hard for this manager. But do I feel like I want to work hard for the next manager? I kind of want to take it easy. I've done my time. So they might leave. It won't be your, your verge and stuff. That you know, it could be more. It could be at least your, your GAC book could be moved on your Graven Burke. And that allows these dens and stuff like that to be moved up. I know we're doing your quality's getting... already there, Kevin. Yeah, it is. It it's is. Amazing. Uh, for me, for me, he's already shown. And I think I saw the best of Gakbo and the worst of Gakbo today in the game. So okay. he, he should have shot. Straight away, when the ball came to his feet twice, would have put your mortgage on nah. him at least hitting the target. Yeah. Where he just dragged yeah. it. He didn't. He, did, he just. He just. He. He didn't even take a shot on one of them. Mm. And I'm like, that's not your position. Your position is running from the midfield at people, mm. doing a couple of zigzags and laying somebody through. That's what he's most effective. Kind of coming more from the left hand side. I've always said it. Uh, there, but the problem is you've got a McAllister that plays in that position. You've got a Jones that plays in that position. Mm. You know, does Gakpo move out to the left? You know, then you're, you're you're battling between Jata Jones and or Jata uh, Gakpo and Nunez for moving around in these three positions, which you don't mind. But now you're throwing young fellas like Dan's into the mix if he keeps going the way he's going in his development. You know, will, will I see Kumas going in there that early? I don't. I don't think his attributes are just there yet for that. You know, you have your Luis Diaz as well out there. Don't forget him. Anyway, so do I see him getting thrown in? No, but I can see him develop. But if you see two people probably stepping in, that look like they're more likely. They kind of have a good shot at it because of how their movement works and how strong they're, they're, they're acting. Yeah. It's Bradley and Dan's at the moment for me are the two strongest contenders to come out from from the U squad and into the main team. You know? Yeah, Neonye as well, I think. Very good. <laughs> I, 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 like Klopp, like I've never seen Klopp react like this Yeah. in a very long time. I think he yeah. is filled with enjoyment on it. I think, I don't think the part and gift that would be that Jürgen Klopp has kind of more or less overseen the large yeah. majority of these youth players. Obviously, the, mm. the changing from Melwood to the AXA training facility was come about due to, obviously, Jürgen Klopp. And, obviously, our fan base had a meltdown for spending £50 million on the academy. But, as to know, it's probably going to produce £300, £400 million pounds in talent over the next 10, 15 years as well. So, it's Arsenal one of did them. that in another dominant team. United yeah. did that in United dominant team. Well. So, you, you need to. Yeah. What's the whole point, Kevin? Chat that you you spend this money on the academy players, and so much money goes into players that we don't even see. Not just for Liverpool, but in terms of every academy facilitates. I it, can only. It makes I can only say one thing, Jack. Mm. Yeah, I, I can only say one thing about that, Jack. When it comes to 
people complained about spending 50 million on that and not on a new player. Mm. They're the same people that want that only turn up to support the team when it's the transfer window then mm. complain a lot when we don't buy somebody and then don't go and watch the games for the rest of the season. These are guys that are that that and do you know what the funny thing is? I don't even think half of them have ever even picked up FIFA and they even know that they, they can do that in a game if they picked it up. I just dealt with it. Some it people are just addicted to transfer windows, man. Yeah. And if there, any money is spent outside of the transfer window, they don't like it. But yes, look what it's gotten us now. Look at the, we just won the Carabao Cup with, with the, with the South, academy players. Like Southampton turned up today as well, Kev, and just he played extremely well. He, he absolutely slapped our ass for large majority that first half. You haven't so lost in 25 been, games, Jack. So, there you go, lads. so yeah. it just goes to show Russell Martin's team have been absolutely flying as well. Um, obviously, we've got the sideline. Obviously, the link is in the description as well, chat. So if you want to have your little say, obviously, uh, yeah, we will leave it there. I just say, then. I was I was ending my stream when as I hit end on my stream, I seen sidelines message pop up and the side oh, from right, my right. thing. So, yeah, Happy sorry, day. sideline, man. Yeah, uh, day, I see you popping in. All good there, mate. Um, bring it in there, lad. Oh, I'm gone. Have I added you in there? Bit Hello. Of... Oh, He's hiding behind something. I'm gone. I've got you hiding somewhere there, mate. One sec. It's that one, isn't it? There we I go. Happy that. days. There we go. That's why you shouldn't give me the buttons. Um, Sideline, thank you very much for joining us again, like you did throughout the week, mate. Did you enjoy that? Oh, you know, man, oh, man. Well, big up to you, uh, Jack. Big up to you, Here Spider. I am on cloud number 10. Not nine. <laughs> wow. 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 These kids just keep on performing lots. We spent as we wow. spoke midweek. Like we've seen even some players that we haven't really seen a lot this season. But what really are the standout moments for you tonight, mates? Players that did um, impress you. To be honest, like uh I, I struggled to watch the game because I was at work and I just came mm. back from work. Like I just came home. And uh, I watched the first 15 minutes. I felt that Southampton, you know, they were trying to be on the, uh, you know, front foot. They had a few chances. They had a disallowed goal. I saw that. Um, they kind of rattled the boys a little bit to the beginning, the first 15, hmm. 20 minutes. But I think these kids, they've grown at least two, three years in their, in their career. They yeah. from this game, they've developed two, three years, I would mm. say, which is phenomenal. Um, I did a, a series of episodes, I think, with uh, with Brian mm. talking about the depth of the squad and whatnot. And us Liverpool have the deepest squad to begin with from the beginning of the season. Um, and we looked at it after 10 games and we looked at it after 20 games in all competitions. So we we have 22 players in the squad before the injuries now with these kids oh my god hmm. wow we got a liverpool a and a liverpool b uh, it reminds me with when they asked uh, Mourinho a few years ago about 4 years ago in a press conference they said uh, who do you think will be you know top 2 in the league he said man city a and man city b yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, I I don't want to brag about it yet. You know, the, the season is not mm. done. The competition is really is fierce and it's on fire. But wow. Just makes it more exciting. It, may do it, it in does. terms of going into post clock era as well. Obviously, there will be, of course, a lot of uncertainty with obviously the new manager. But if you're Xavi Alonso or if you're a midfielder, young midfielder, and you, mm. you've got the potential, but if any elite manager looking at the, the, the kids as well in terms of the, the quality there, it's looking absolutely phenomenal as well. Um, man of the match, you've had to pick one, miss, uh, from, from your point of view. In terms of, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say you. dance, uh, yeah. I don't want to say dance, you know, even Kelleher made Ke again, uh, yeah. Keller made like few good saves. Like every time I'm looking at the at the phone at my cell phone, I'm watching the phone, like watching the game on the side. <laughs> I'm looking, oh my god, Keller, Oof, another save. Oh my god, another save. Wow, I, I want to say Kelleher. I want to say hmm. Dan's. I want to say 
I, I really liked how Clark, you know, played as well. Yeah, and again, he had obviously played a large majority off the back of that Wembley final, mate. I think the more, I think I was quite impressed with him as well, mate. Um, but in terms of going into that United game, obviously we did get thrown up against. For anyone just tuning in as well, and um, coming in from work or whatnot, um, I'll just quickly go through obviously the Kev. Oh, if you, I was going to say, but yeah, I've got it up here. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously Wolves, Coventry. In the one of the quarter final games, Liverpool United, obviously Liverpool traveling away to Old Trafford, um, City Newcastle, it's gonna be a big one, that boys, as well, and Chelsea Leicester, Chelsea squeaky bum time this evening again, somehow getting past, um, a very informed lead side, by the way. Um, but sideline, um, closing thoughts, mate, from you in terms of obviously going into obviously the Forest game. What do you want to be seeing? Do you anticipate a couple more of those youngsters to feature in the league? We should, uh, I think, club should feature a few of them at least. Hmm. Uh, easy up the you know, maybe the three boys will come back Salah, Nunes, and uh, Sobosly. But I would say let them easy in, not. Don't just bring them in right away, feature in some of the kids, you know, at least for the first half or the second half, depending on how the game goes, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that we get, if it's not Alonso, like a good coach that can really take care of these mm -hmm. kids and, and take them to the next step. Because six, seven of them, you know, you add it to that big squad. Wow. Wow. Oof. We will be cooking next season. Yeah, we'll be seriously cooking. Right. Yeah. Um, just shout out where everyone can find you, please, mate, and obviously what you've got coming up this week in terms of your channel. Uh, oof. The channel, I kind of put it a little bit on pause, but uh, no. hopefully within the Send next some, few weeks. Yeah. Shout out anyway. People For in chat sure. will go and subscribe anyway. So, sounds good. Well, thank you so much, man. It's Sideline Football Show. You can look me up on YouTube. I'm only on YouTube. I'm probably going to come back and uh, do some watch-alongs and, and mm -hmm. do uh, – do some live streaming and I'll invite both of you hopefully within the next couple of weeks. It's just school, family, work, balancing all of these and Liverpool as well. Yeah. Big part of my life. So I hear you. Up. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> big up to you guys. Swinging off me every day, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, call in again, mate. You're always welcome. Sure. A massive thank you for uh, popping on, mate. And me and Kev uh, will be there if you need us on a show when that, mate. Awesome. Yeah. All good, mates. Have a good night. Enjoy it. Thank you. And uh, thank you for popping in again, mate. That was oh, yeah, wrong button there. There we go. Um, interesting. That Kev won it. Obviously, yeah. the sideline mentioning Kelly. Who again? Uh, I think it's similar. Like when we speak about Alison Becker, we've come accustomed over the last couple of weeks now that that is standard practice for Quiven in, in terms of between the sticks. Didn't have it easy. Um. Did I mispronounce it, Kevin? Yeah, yeah, you did. Uh, it's Irish my fans. name. It's yeah. my name. Oh, is it your name? That's my name in Irish. Yeah, go on then. What's the proper pronunciation? Quiveen. Quiveen. No, Quiveen. Quiveen. Yeah, so like think of it like almost saying Queen and then Quiveen. Yeah. That's the way we say it down south. Oh, not they could have Quiveen and what's the south version? Huh? What's the Quiveen? Quiveen. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to say. Yeah. But look, yeah, look, a brilliant player again. Yeah, he, you know, he, he Keller has been kind of like the side, the, the side piece man in the match for the last few weeks now, and um, and it's just down to basically, fellas just doing better on the pitch at the time, or doing doing a couple of more important things. To be honest, you know, like I mean, Dan's getting two goals today, coming on, changing the flow of the game. I think the big change was. Pretty much uh, McConnell uh, kind of being moved away from where Joe, Joe stepped up after McConnell went off because they weren't kind of trampling over each other. I if really I need... like McConnell, yeah. Kevin. I do. I like him as well. I think he's a great player. I just thought they were they were hindering each other and it became, yeah. they were getting, we were getting caught in the white spaces because of it. So, yeah. He's, he's a, he's, you know, as I said before, I don't see a lot of the academy, but McConnell, man. Obviously, he's already had a couple of runouts. Obviously, got an assist in the earlier rounds in the FA Cup as well. I was very fortunate to have gone that game. And I really do like him. I think McConnell, yet again, I think obviously the, I think he's probably ahead of Tyler Morton in all honesty. I know Tyler Morton's on loan 
um, in the championship so far. But you should nearly forget about him, and he's good. Yeah, to come back and he well. and statistically speaking, no one's been seeing Tyler Morton's development this season. I think Kev, you alluded to a couple of weeks ago in terms of his ball yeah. retention, it's one yeah. of the highest in the, it's the, the highest in the league. Order. Yeah, yeah it was right. highest in 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 the, in the leagues around yeah Europe, it's but it's it's probably one of the highest in the world as well. But uh, but yeah, I mean, would it be just like in leagues out there? He's developing even more. So <laughs> yet again, we add add him into the mix. I think even you speak concert again, twenty years old, the lad again tonight, and he is now we it's Virgil Van Dijk. Like in, in all honesty, for me, mate, at that. twenty, like he is absolute. He's an absolute joke. Of how good he is at football, even Brilliant. at the age of twenty. Only, only one qualm with him was when he he got too close to Bradley and then misjudged where your man just danced between yeah, the two of them. them. But that's one of them. That's youth naivety. But he got back and covered off, and it was yeah. great. So he's you know, got a, he's got that electric pace to really recover, mate, as well, hasn't he? So it's exciting, exciting. Yeah, stuff. absolutely. Yeah, of course. Go on, Kev. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right, chat. We we'll get to all your comments as well. Uh, Dean, I uh, went off a little uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I fell for Gakpo it's on Dean he's only young himself and he's playing up top with two inexperienced kids I think he's got he got better as the game went on yeah and obviously obviously what Kev said before and what you've all saying so far tonight Jack, he's better well. deeper yeah I think with as you've hit the nail on the head there Dean I think it's for me, Gakpo even playing at 50% tonight. I mean, the main thing is Gakpo's come out of this game fresh, f- fit, because obviously we know the injuries Liverpool have sustained in recent weeks. But I think that's the main thing. He's He was a leader tonight. Obviously, he could have got a couple of goals here and there, but at the end of the day, Liverpool have won this game 3-0, and I think he's soldiered on. He's one of the most senior players in that team at still a young age. 23-24 Gakpo still. Still so young in his development. Very young. But, uh, Very young. yeah, I think he demands so much from himself as well, though, Kev Dunny. I think, yeah. obviously, when we done our transfer shows, when we signed him, the PSV lads were all jumping in the chat going, you've got a very special player. So, I think the best is well to come with Cody Gakpo in the next couple of months anyway. You know, so we, we only need us. Well, look, you look back to last season, lads, and you look at the hindrances that we had. We had to play um, with a broken Fabinho and a broken Jordan Henderson in the middle of the park. The only cover that we had to come on, because Jones kept getting injured inside there, and the only real cover that we had to come on was an in and out Tiago, a broken Keita, a broken Oxley Chamberlain, a James Milner that legs were already going from on him. This is the this is the, the contrast from last season to this season. You know we have lads that are that are batting each other for positions on the pitch. I mean Jota's been probably our best finisher all season. Nunes is everybody just loves Nunes just for his effort alone. Just Nunes, um, Nunes, Nunes, Nunes up to Nunes. That's it. Just, Salah, Salah just does Salah things whenever Salah wants to do Salah things, and you know we're, we're wrapping it up in the cotton wool as well. Like, yeah, we'll look just, we can we'll get a rest. We can, and it's all because of what's happening you now with this youth development and the way it's coming in. And these lads are pushing the seniors a lot quicker than anybody expected. Like Trent. It's got competition uh, at long last. Massive, massive competition. competition. And, like, I, I, I can't remember issues that we've had at right back since Bradley's come in. I, I haven't thought about the right back position allowed, since Bradley came in. It's allowed Gomez to flourish as well, though, mate. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Like, Gomez can actually play centre yeah. half. Now, yeah. it's not like what we've had over the last couple of years when we've had to play yeah. Gomez right back or uh, wherever he has in the team, but. We, we we were shoe holding them in really, but yeah, it's amazing. And technically and statistically, and even just for sheer footballing pleasure, Van Dyke and Gomez were probably our best partnership in 2019. Out of all the partnerships that have been around in the last yeah. number of years, they were fantastic. The speed out of the two of them, Van Dyke didn't get triple past that season, and that was down to how much so Gomez covered him as well. Yeah. So look, I know Kanate Kanate stepped up. Kanate's played more games to Liverpool this season than he has since he's joined. So like over his entire life, because he was in and out all last season, there was no, yeah. there was no uh, consistency within him. No, there's consistency. Now you're seeing the best uh, of what Kanate can do. Some of the ways he was like, it looks like he's lost pace with somebody when he's chasing him back. Two strikes later, he's up with him and muscling him off the ball and then scooping the ball away. And he's such a gifted defender, yeah. You're really to watch again as well, mate. Like the, it's such a. I'm sorry, when you. Treat you go- like if, yeah, if if you are a Liverpool fan and you come off the back of this game and you're a bit down, forget it. 
this Liverpool team, yeah, give it three, four, no, well, not give it three, four years, but in terms of three, four years down the road, this this team, City when they're in the confidence, up the Reds, um, will be winning back-to-back league titles. Fingers crossed. Um, but it's, 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 it's so, so exciting. So, so exciting in all honesty. But let's get to Robin's comments as well. As Matthias has said, Elliot's ran more than 120 minutes on Sunday and looked like a million after the match. And then again today, what is he made of? Iron mate. He's been having his Guinness. Um, I'll tell you that now anyway. He's, he's phenomenal again. Uh, I think especially the fact that he's got that maturity as well, though, Matthias and Kev, in terms of... I loved it. I don't know if you've seen the post-match interview with Dan's, Kev. Oh, yeah, I did. I, I watched it to him, yeah. yeah. He emphasised, like all of us, we were all grinning at the telly in terms of just how proud we were of both of those lads or the whole team. Yeah. But he was like, he was like a proud dad. And was. Elliot's like, what, 20? 20, <laughs> The same 20 age as, the, same age as Dan. There's like, oh no, there's two years between them. Yeah, he's it, the same age as Bradley. But it just goes to show, and I think this is what, in terms of the development and the maturity levels of Elliot, obviously he's already done so well since breaking in to this Liverpool team, Kev. But I think in terms of going forward, I think we spoke about his impact off the bench. But obviously just in terms of having that right, I think the right... And this all goes down to the the environment that Jürgen and the coaching staff have built at the football club. It's getting the right players in, getting the right youngsters in. I think obviously the obviously Alex Hingenfall obviously done that interview yeah. a couple of weeks ago with Carragher, and he stated no player is allowed a card over one point three yeah. engine, and and that's where it starts, mate. In terms of not just the first team, but in terms of just getting it right. Yeah, Alan McCoy right had time. massive, mm. massive praise for what the academy and Jurgen Klopp and 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 the team downwards does. You know, you can see, you look, they, you know, they're, they're not allowed to wear certain watches, they're not allowed to wear, I have certain cars, they're not allowed to interact in certain places, they're not allowed to go to certain places. Uh, and, you know, once they even, I think that happens even after the first contract. And they need to be kind of like regulars in the senior side before they're even allowed to develop that or, or show that they have to earn their their spending of their money. Do you believe yeah. that? Uh, which is great, man. It launches humility. I mean, as a dude who was in the Navy and uh, uh, myself, you learn that kind of way. I mean, it's not all about being told what to do or told how to do this, told how to do that. Mm-hmm. It's about learning self-discipline, self-control, about getting a proper routine, a proper mindset into yourself uh, and, and you know, and being the best possible version of you that you can be mm-hmm. um, while still, you know, and being able to enjoy with, with the money, with the common sense to enjoy yourself in the right way so look there's a lot there happening and yeah. you can see it, it, you can also see why Klopp is so tired and why he's leaving this season because Klopp doesn't have sports directors he doesn't have all of this he manages just, everything from yeah. top to bottom and that's why he's tired you know I think he's just looking at all the young youthful players Kev and he's probably said to himself yeah if someone's out there if it's a laundry whoever it is I want to give someone else an opportunity with this crop of players yeah. Not just the first team, but <coughs> before yeah, it's coming through before the die on my stream after that right. spaghetti. Nice. Um, but yeah, it, it's gonna be amazing. And as Matthias has said there, Alex Inglehoff, uh, for next prime minister. Mm. We all agree with that. Yeah. Um, strongest team for me at Old Trafford. Let's 10-0 them. Um, 100 percent there. Big up there, Charlie. I made up for the young men, um, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's a lot of filling out and growing too. The future could be great with our youth system as well. Charlie, I tell you what, mate. I'm getting ahead of myself. They're all winning Ballon d'Ors, lads. Um, <laughs> especially that uh, Dan's going to put uh, Lewandowski and Haaland to shame in a couple of years. Uh, Haaland, Dan's is coming for you, lads. Yes. Um, that's a show, by the way, City fans, if you're tuning in. <laughs> Enjoy the, enjoy the conference. Um, what's Kelly here? What does Kelly have to do to get a man of the match award? Two, score know. two goals. Yeah, score two <laughs> goals and get the assist. Uh, Alan. Yeah. Big up there, like, oh, he's right. He's right. Like I, I said it earlier that that, that um that Kelleher is just getting 
side piece man of the match because everybody else has been stepping up as well on the pitch. And even though his saves are so important, like really, really important in the games, he's not getting the beat just because of, you know, the stuff. Like, Bird, actually, you know, in the cup final the other day, I think maybe, man, I know Bird's won it and he was brilliant. My man of the match, Yeah, Keller was my man of the match as well that day. Him and Endo were my man of the match that day. The, but um, the, but the today, Dan's kind of deserves it for just stepping in the way he did. And, you know, two two important saves, two important goals. But, yeah, they both deserve it. Yeah, I'd love to be in that house, mate. Obviously, you're saying it was Nam was in the crowd as well. Special moments. Dan's keep your heads up, lads. Obviously, as we just alluded to, you're in the right environment. You know that a Manchester United where you can do whatever, get about 50 grand even before the age of 20 and go out partying and all that. It's about having that right people around you. Certainly having that McAllister coming on as well. We've got such a great core. Do you see? Do you see? I, I I was slipping between the games. Well, I know I had the Liverpool game on the screen, and because I've got a wide screen, oh, now, but second screen. I, up. I haven't seen the goal, but apparently United got a goal that was basically like ours in the final. Uh, Endo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing happened oh. with Endo. Could have gotten it, but even how how Bruno was conducting himself at the corner flag, just like the, the match went on about two minutes over time, and he was conducting himself with smarminess and cockiness and and all of, all of the stuff that that. Like Jorgen Klopp would have pulled them off the pitch or I'm probably never well, that just goes to the right. levels I yeah. think even the most staunch yeah. United fans won't like us but they'll appreciate the proper United fans yeah. will appreciate the environment as we've just said yeah. there the environment yeah. at Manchester United has done since Fergie's Ox- left is an absolute shambles and if you ask any United fan hand on heart their club is an absolute mess at the minute Um, they would dream to have even a couple of youngsters coming through Obviously, the young lads may know he's a very good talent, but you need more yeah. than just that. Um, but I tell you, it's going to be the kids rocking but The up problem with the United at the moment is yeah. that if they don't turn things around pretty quickly, these menus and whatnot are going to jump ship to, you know, these bigger clubs. You know, Real maybe you get snapped up by Bayern Munich straight away. Yeah. You know, you can go to Real Madrid as, as a squad player, no problem. They, they can come in and offer money that United just can't refuse. And if the representative player's representative is being told that he can go and go this way, you know, he still hasn't even decided whether he's going to be playing for Nigeria or England as well yet. Mm. So England are going to try and snap him up as fast as possible and give him game time in the next, what is it, they've got like a few weeks to call him up to the England squad. So he needs to be called up to the England squad in the next in the next. Not ahead of our case, so Elliot. No, no. So Southgate, you no. fraud. <laughs> You've been warned. I will he's find play, He's playing for the Liverpool job, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. He can take his yeah. MS whatever waistcoat and shove it in the bin. Might, so might, just, apply, might apply I, 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 the job. I can't, I can't say much bad about so kid. No, no Southgate chat. The absolute fraud yeah. on this channel. Is, God, England. Uh, oh, but, but he's, he's, he's done Abbey. better than most managers at, at England oh, and careless. But it's, a, it's, a but it's boring football. It's yeah, boring it's football. Yeah. Boring. boring, boring, boring. That's why we do not watch England. I know we're doing a watch along, but uh, I don't want it. I was like, yeah, it's not that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'll be uh, sorry, Kevin. I'm going on a rant here. He's no, yeah, man, okay. Um, but yeah, as Panov said, uh, Scouts said there, we haven't been this blessed since Pongo and Latalic. True, <laughs> lad. True. <laughs> um, as Panov said, just a shame Klopp out won't be around. Thing is, though, Panov, as me and Kev said this week after the final, when we spoke to you, he will be. He'll be like a proud dad, whether he's in Spain or wherever, on a lounger. Who was he building that house? He's building that house in Spain, isn't he? He's, yeah, Bjorka. Yeah, Bjorka. yeah. Jürgen will be on his big, massive lilo in the middle of some 50 foot pool, wherever he is. He's got a couple of bob, and he's so he can build Yeah, with, with the umbrella and the speed hat on and the cigar in the hand. Well, the yeah. Other. Probably might build a, like a home cinema or like a slide coming down, as long as he doesn't injure himself <laughs> anyway. But he deserves it. He deserves a relaxing. He he's does. probably got his yeah. own. Uh, yeah, he certainly got his own beer kegs and everything. He'll have some great beer selection there. Edinger will certainly be on the menu. Um, but he will be pan off. He will be watching. Like, of course, and that's the thing. He'll enjoy it more as well, which would be the good I think that's why he went kind of early as well in his statement about leaving, because mm. we're talking about him now, like, yeah, we're, we're getting used to him leaving, 
we're getting used to moving on one out and we're getting used to it's, easy, it's not like it's going to be at the end of the season where we win everything and all of a sudden he just leaves and we're all devastated and we're just having shit summers we don't know what to do Jorgen was thinking about everybody else but himself he was thinking about himself and his initial decision about he needs to go because of his health his family he wants, he wants yeah. to enjoy what part of his life he has with, with, at this age now and um, you know he's probably seen managers down through the years like Roy Hodgson just being stuck in the game for so long you know Neil Warnock doing the he, same thing over and over it's, he doesn't want to be that dude the he, he'd do it at one club yeah. yeah, the Dortmund period was probably what made him make this decision. Obviously, the back end of that Dortmund period, he even said himself when he joined Liverpool, it was it did become a bit toxic. And yeah. obviously, Everton he built it kind of not being forgotten at Dortmund, but it, it just got a bit sour. And I think he, as we've said already tonight, he's seen this youthfulness. Yeah. Whoever comes in in the summer, he's got one hell of a job, but it's certainly helped by the the, the amount of talent on show anyway. As well, uh, keep them home 100%. Charlie, that's the main thing. We've got the right environment, we've got the right players, we've got the right set of fans as well. Um, and even if a player does struggle in certain seasons, we'll get behind them even more as well. Uh, I think, us as a fan base, obviously, we want to be seeing all of our players playing at their maximum every single game. But even like look at Stefan Bacetic, I think when he comes back, I think we're waxing lyrical about Endo, but I think when Bacetic broke onto the scene. Uh, last season or the season before, obviously getting that goal against Aston Villa, we're like, whoa, and gone, hello, hello, hello. And he become the player that we're all hoping to, obviously still a young lad, Spanish international. He will be a Spanish international in a couple of, give it a year, if he comes back full fitness, uh, 100%, there's no way they don't pick him. I know Sp- the Sp- Spanish team is very stacked with talent, even at this young age. But, uh, what a headache to have. Yeah. Great headache. So it's going to be exciting as well. But, uh, Kev or yeah. Chas, final closing thoughts there, La. I think in terms of we've mentioned Gakpo, we've mentioned the forward lads, the goal scorers, mentioned Kelleher, Bradley. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't really need, we've spoken about Connor. Um, going into the Forest game, lads. Um, yeah. The last Saturday game of the season. Yeah. It's uh, Oh, lads, yeah, if you weren't here earlier, Oh, Everton is most. I, I just left you know because there was only like a couple in earlier. Everton's going to move to the second last game of the season on May fifteenth. It's the, it's the only place logical place it's going to go to, mm. and because uh, I was doing the calculations earlier, which means that Liverpool could go to Goodison at their very last time ever playing at Goodison, relegate Everton and win the league at the same time. My lord, I think the internet will break. Yeah, it, it just yeah, well, amazing. Ball. It's like Christmas in <laughs> May. Well, chat, Kev, <laughs> uh, man of the match, chat, get your final man of the match in. It was your man of the match. Uh, uh, I, I want to say Harvey Elliott and Jaden Dance comes on, he's young for that, does well as well. I mean, you know, if, if I want to channel my inner, inner, right, keen, Carconian nature of me, I'd say, Kellis, 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 doing his job, like, he's doing his job. You know what I mean? He's doing his job, like. I could do a better news act because you know I'm from here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, it's not. Yeah, of it's course. Yeah, of but course. like, you know, and um, so yeah, look, yeah, Dan Dan's just there. You know, Kuma had a good game for a while. Um, going from that side, Harvey works tirelessly. Um, like you, yeah. players have come on as well. Um, uh, Bradley I think did it. Well, that's it really. been if I had to give it outfield player Dan's go and then the goalkeeper. So you know, I'd have to give a, I'd have to give a share man the match. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, quickly uh, as well. Nice one, Press. Gomez in that effing six hot press. I think he done it, well. No, he was I, I can see what he was saying. He was poor yeah. and, and a bright win when he was on the same time as McConnell. When McConnell yeah. went off, well, Gomez improved. Yeah, it's a uh, it's like it's like me in the kitchen. I just I'm completely out of my death. Um so thank God I don't stream in the kitchen. Yeah, I'd be getting lost. Um but chat, Kev, what have you yeah. got coming up on when's your next live stream? Shout out to your channel. Uh, it's I'm gonna be uh, yeah, you'll find me live on uh Spider LFC on YouTube uh this uh two forty five on Saturday for the for the Nottingham Forest game for a watch along. It'll be the same as Spider LFC on Facebook. And you'll find me at Irish Spider Guy on Twitch. 
uh, find me there for that kind of stuff. Same place as well for gaming and Irish Spider Guy on YouTube for gaming as well. It's a nice one, man. And a uh, massive thank you, Kev. Massive thank you to Sideline Football as well. The link to Sideline's football channel links will be in the description when this is being uploaded. Um, and I'm going with press. Don't apologize, like chat. You can swear as much as you like in the comments, but uh, I'm from Ireland, lad. I, I'm just I'm trying to stop I, myself I, I, from saying the c word constantly because we say it every second that's, sentence that's over bands, here. That's banned that's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. On YouTube, you would say uh, to me it is, but you know where I come from and like Australians, like car people, we say it all the time, not in a nasty way, but just in a sentence. If we say it about you, it's nicer. If we if we call you something like an old dickhead or something like that, that's worse than what we say that. You know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, absolute quiet. crisp. What I've that's learned, what I've the, learned that's what about, the crisp. Horrible I've learned that. with the mic in front of me that that never, they never come together. Yeah, maybe if we're uh, getting beat, it might come up. Um, chat, massive thank you. I, as I say again, great support from Kevin, obviously sideline, but a massive thank you to every single one of you as always tonight. Chat, if, even if you're watching on the repeat, um, a massive thank you goes to me. Well, goes to everyone really. To everyone that gets involved in Kev shows and everyone shows on YouTube as well, in terms of just supporting all of our content, massively does help out. Um, really, really does. I do appreciate it as well. Um, man and my man in the match, Dan's, yeah, has to be. Um, fantastic five star Liverpool. The youngsters are absolutely flying. Liverpool flying into the quarters against uh, that toilet bowl of Arena, Old Trafford, anyway, in a couple of weeks. We'll win there. Well, we'll do the double at Old Trafford this season. Kev, we'll be, we'll be enjoying that. Yeah. But Reds, have a lovely rest of your night. You're going to Thursday. Smash it. Nearly the weekend, everyone, whatever you're doing. Look after yourselves. Um, happy days there. Nice one, Chris. Um, we were going to bring some of the lads in to, to talk about the game tonight, but it was past their bedtime. So, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. No, I'll talk to them in bed now when we were talking about them. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Do it all Everton fans as well. Um, no, no, the, the, the young lads uh, in the team. Oh, That's yeah. better if they couldn't come on, the kids. I've got school in the morning. <laughs> got the GCSE exams coming up in May. Um, so, chat. You've got school in the morning. Right, chat. Have a lovely rest of your night. A massive thank you as well. Kev, absolute legend, mate. Thank you for coming on. Oh, what a See you later, everyone. And, uh, yeah, we'll be live tomorrow evening for another show. Ta-da. <laughs>